And that was so irresponsible of Google to do. So no, I'm glad we have a chance to talk about this because I'm really horrified by what Google did in introducing Gemini. And, and just to give a little background here, so yeah, I'm sure your listen, many of your listeners know, uh, Google Gemini was programmed to uh, to answer in ways that basically you know the most extreme DEI officer would demand that people speak, and so you know if you ask for a picture of the founding fathers, they're multiracial or all black. You know this or is just Nazi soldiers. Nazi, yeah, not even Nazis had had to be multiracial or or black. So so there's two things to say about this. The first is that Google must be an unbelievably stupid company. Like, did nobody test? this before they released it to the public. And obviously Google is not a stupid company, which leads me to my next conclusion, which is if Google did such a stupid, stupid thing, um, so disgraced its product that it's banking so much on, I mean, it depends a lot on the success of Gemini. Uh, and now they've alienated half the country right away on the first day, practically they alienated them. They couldn't be that stupid. I think what's happening to them is what happened to us in universities, which is what I've called structural stupidity. So you have very smart people, but if anyone questions a DEI-related policy on campus, they would get attacked. And that's what most of the early blowups were. I think you probably had Brett Weinstein on here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what you know, Erica Christakis at Yale and Nicholas Christakis at Yale. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know, if people wrote these thoughtful, caring memos about a pol- opposing a policy, there would be a conflagration, they'd be attacked, and they would sometimes lose their jobs. So that's what happened to us in universities in 2015 to usher in our now nine years of insanity, uh, which I think are, might be ending. I think the, you know, the last fall was so humiliating for higher ed um, that I think we might be at a turning point. But my point is for Google, I suspect that Google was suffering from an extreme case of structural stupidity because surely a lot of those engineers could see that this is terrible. This is a massive violation of the truth, and part of Google's brand is truth and trust. So I suspect they were just afraid to say anything, and that's why Google made this colossal blunder of introducing you know, woke AI um, at a time when we desperately need to trust our institutions that are related to knowledge, and Google was trusted, and now they've lost a lot of it. And it's not just Google. It's ChatGPT. There's, there's. But ChatGPT is not as explicit. I mean, that's not you know, as that explicit. Was... But it does do certain things. Like yeah. if you ask it to say something positive about Donald Trump, it refuses. Yeah. You ask it to say something positive about Joe Biden, it'll gaslight you. Yeah. No, that's right. I'm not. And uh, there was recently. Uh, was it David Rosado or or who was it? Who put out some listing of how far left each of the different um, different AI products are. So you can certainly say that ChatGPT is is not politically neutral, but you wouldn't say from that that the people at ChatGPT or OpenAI are stupid. You would not look at this product and say, how could they be so dumb as to have it be left-leaning? But with Google, you have to say, how could they be so dumb as to produce black Nazis for us? Right. I just don't think they played it all out. I think this ideological subversion, this thing that they've done with DEI and with the universities and the education system, it just seemed like you had to apply that to artificial intelligence because you're essentially, mm. you're giving artificial intelligence these protocols. You're giving it these parameters in which it can address things. Yeah. And if you're doing it through that lens, this is the, the inevitable result of that. You're going to get black Nazis. Oh, no, I don't know about the black Nazi. I don't think it goes that extreme. So to the extent that But if you AI, say DEI, if you apply oh. that to everything across the board and don't make exceptions in terms of like yeah. historical yeah. accuracy, the founding fathers of America mm-hmm. being all black. Yeah. Like, yeah. So um, large, again, I don't, you know, I'm not an expert in AI, but large language models are basically just consuming everything written and then spitting stuff back out. And so it might be that, you know, most stuff is written. Uh, you know, the people on the left are, are dominant universities. They, they probably publish more books, whatever. Right, but there's nothing there's, written about black Nazis. That's right. That's right. So what I think is going on here is that I could see AI seeming to lean left, even if it wasn't programmed to lean left. That might just be the data input that it takes. But to get black Nazis, you need somebody had to program in those commands. Somebody had to consciously say, 
you know, anything about representation is going to, everything's going to look like a Benetton. No, it's not even like a Benetton. Benetton ads had much more diversity yeah. in the 1980s and 90s. Yeah. Um, so no, I would, I would agree that, that the Gemini case, clearly someone deliberately programmed in all kinds of rules that, yeah, they seem to come from a DEI manual just without much thinking. Yeah. How do they come back from that? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know how deep the rot runs. I don't know how bad things are. You know, Google used to have an amazing um, corporate culture. Um, oh, boy. Look at this. What's the... Apple is in talks to let Google Gemini oh, power no. iPhone AI features. Oh, Companies... my God. Go back. Oh, sorry. I mean, I was adding that, too. Yeah, go, go back. Uh, um, companies considering AI deal that would build on search pact. Apple also recently held discussions with open AI about mm -hmm. deal. On this news, then a bunch of a big investment happened too. Magnificent Network. Seven adds three hundred fifty billion on Gemini's reported iPhone deal. Uh, so, because um, Google has implemented AI into their phones, specifically Samsung. Samsung's new Galaxy S twenty four Ultra has a bunch of pretty fantastic AI features. One of them being real time translation. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, the, your ability to summarize web pages instantaneously, um, mm -hmm. summarizing notes, uh, bullet points, it, it, very helpful features. So because of that, uh, another one is uh, your ability to circle any image and it automatically will search that image for you. Like, what is that? Circle mm -hmm. it, boom. The Samsung phone will immediately give you a result and tell you what it is. So very, very helpful. But the the now there becomes this is something that Apple has to compete with. Yeah. So <clears throat> Apple's decided to try to implement AI, but it has to outsource. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is it is alarming.